How many of you are glad you and I have dominion, the Bible says, in the earth? We have authority. We have power. Uh, God gave it first to Adam. And then uh, when Adam forfeited it, the church was filled with the Holy Ghost. God put it in his name. He said, all authority is in Jesus. And when you're in him and he's in you, you're supposed to use that power and dominion and authority also. So if sickness tries to rise up, you rise up in the name of Jesus because you serve Jehovah Rapha. And there's an anointing that will begin to flow. Why do bad things happen to good people? Why is there poverty in the world? Why can't I seem to recover from a loss? Pastor Walter Hallam tackles these and many more tough questions in his book, The Big Why. You'll learn how to view your memories as treasures and to cherish each one as they fuel you on to live a life full of faith and confidence. So as you speak and apply the Word of God to your life, you're speaking it into the atmosphere. I'm going to make a little statement here, and this may mess up some people's theology, but that's all right. You're wrong, and I'm right. Here, here's the way it is. You ready for this? The kingdom of God is in you. The kingdom of God is not all around you. You still live on planet Earth. The kingdom of God is in you. When God created man, He created him out of that earth, out of the dirt. There's a certain energy to it. Think about it with me. You can take water and you can put oxygen or you can put wind or you can put air in that and it'll start bubbling, it'll start boiling, it'll, it'll begin to take on a whole different uh, format and it will create an energy. You just put a little oxygen in water and before long that starts happening. Everybody understand, this isn't a science class, but everybody understand what I'm saying. I'm not going to give you a test, <laughs> but I might. And so it's very important. Fire, fire is a powerful energy. And it creates a sound, just like water creates a sound if you put that oxygen in it. And it releases an energy. Uh, that's why it's so important if you remember Elijah says to his servant, I hear the sound of the abundance of water. Uh, nothing had happened yet. Nothing had happened yet. But he said, I hear the sound of the abundance of water, the abundance of rain. He knew there, but he had to say it. And then he had to tell his servant, you just keep going, which means you just keep saying it. You keep expecting. Because there's going to be some oxygen. Get in this word that I'm speaking and water's about to happen. When the fire of God fell, it came in, the Bible says, like a rushing mighty wind, and it filled. Listen, it creates a sound. You want the fire of God in your life? You got to create a sound. You got to release what's on the inside of you. The Bible is full of that from Genesis to Revelation. That's what praise is all about. When God created Adam, He created him out of the dirt. The dirt by itself doesn't seem to have a sound to it. So God created that man, stood him up, and blew his own oxygen into him. He blew heaven's resource, spirit, into him, and Adam became a living soul, and the power of God was given to him so whatever he called anything that's where it was and he had authority and dominion to run all of what a God, his kingdom on earth that he had created. Am I making any sense? Maybe this is only clicking in my head and I want this to get in you. The Holy Ghost is like the wind of heaven. The Spirit of God when he comes in you and fills you, the problem is you're the door. You're the window. You're the gate. You're the one that can release that, and you do that with your mouth. That's why the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, are y'all getting a hold of this? You want God to manifest in that hospital room. It's really important that you release the kingdom of God there. You want God to manifest in that business. 
it's, it, you want God and His kingdom to rule in your home, in your family, in your kids, in your marriage. It's important that you speak that and you say that and you begin to release out of this piece of dirt the kingdom of God that lives inside of a clay vessel. That's what the Bible says. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, yeah, why don't I give you like 10 seconds right there to release some anointing in this house and to begin to magnify the Lord and begin to believe God for something. Begin to worship the Lord and, and tell God you love Him. That's why praise is so important. That's why Hebrews 13 says we offer a sacrifice of praise. A sacrifice of praise. It's the only one in the Bible that you're commanded to offer today. Let me tell you what a sacrifice really means. It means something died. It means something that was important died. In the Bible, that's what it means. It means something was important. That means our old nature, our old personality. We, were, we are willing to die to things in our life that in any way inhibit us from praising God. It's called a sacrifice of praise. Well, I'm not so sure that I believe in lifting my hands to the Lord. Well, you didn't write the book and you don't own the kingdom. No, if you're going to do it God's way and get that flow of God working in your life, at some point you're going to have to magnify the Lord. And you're going to, listen, and then, and then begin to praise Him. You're going to have to let the wind of God, the Holy Spirit, is like the wind, the Bible says. No one tells Him what to do. He, uh, Jesus said in John 3, it's important. you got to let the wind of God begin to release the power, the glory, the anointing of God, and offer a sacrifice of praise. Oh, I'm preaching better than you're amen, and I promise you right now. A sacrifice is something where you died to your own inhibition and you made a decision by whatever the unction is that you're just going to at least shake your foot a little bit. Come on, I'm talking about a sacrifice of prayer. I wish somebody would just jump up and just spin around in a circle for a moment and begin to magnify the Lord. Sacrifice, sacrifice, a sacrifice of praise. God, I don't have anything in me that won't die on your altar. Yeah, you've got, you got to be willing to magnify the Lord. Even if it's a sacrifice. Especially if it's a sacrifice. Oh, hallelujah. A sacrifice. The Bible says a sacrifice of praise. Now, what? There's a word there. Continually. Oh my goodness. You mean just on? You mean just on Sunday? Just when we come to? No, no, no. Continually. Continually. I want to take just a minute and take a break here from the message just for a second. Thanks for being with me today, but I want to talk to you about something that I believe is very powerful in your life. I have a book here called From This Day On, and it literally is a roadmap on how to live forward instead of living backwards. Too many times we're always looking back, trying to find out uh, why did something go wrong or how can I overcome what I've experienced and how can I undo something that, uh, that really is still affecting me today that I wish I could undo. Well, here it is for you today. This book called From This Day On is a powerful word that I believe God has placed in my spirit just for you. You can go to uh, walterhallam.net and just go right to the shop there. You'll find this book. Order it. We'll get it right to you. We have a few in stock. It'll come right to you. I look forward to putting this in your hand. Thanks for being with me. Let's get back to the Word today. I thank God that the Spirit of God can now live in a man. And He's in you. His kingdom is in you. 
Oh, let God, let this activate in the understanding of this church. The kingdom of God is within you. And it's trapped in you unless you open the trap door. Woo, hallelujah. Don't ever let the devil tell you to close your trap. Shut your trap up. No, 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 no. Not me. I will bless the Lord at all times. I'll activate and energize out here what God put inside of this piece of clay. He lives in the hearts of men, the Bible says. He lives in your life. He always has. Well, I think that's just the way you see it, Pastor. Don't ever get so sophisticated because there'll come a day if you close up the portal, there'll come a day you'll be so desperate you'll wish you were well prepared before that moment ever gets there. We live, the Bible says, in perilous times. I'm not putting fear on you. I'm just quoting the scripture to you. We live in perilous times. One translation says high risk times. Extremely high risk. Everything's a risk today. Now our entertainment is risky. Tie something to your feet and jump off of a bridge and hope that the bungee works. I'm like, what? Why would you provoke God to evil? Why do it? I'm trying to get rid of my fear. How about praying in the Holy Ghost? And let the peace of God that passes understanding, instead of getting addicted to some form of adrenaline rush that's going to push you too far one day, you don't want to desensitize those early warning mechanisms on the inside of you. Oh, hallelujah. I'm not sure who I said that for, but I might have just saved your life. If you'll apply it right. I'll tell you the Holy Ghost is in this place right now. I said the Spirit of God is in this place. We live in high risk times. We don't entertain, we don't entertain, entertain ourselves with high risk. That's like entertaining ourselves by paying money to watch the breaking of the Ten Commandments. Yeah, I'm old school, all right. I promise you, God is. He was there before you and I were. Be seated just for a second. Our time's almost up this morning. I'll pick it up in another service if I can. In the book of Ruth, in the book of Ruth, there's some interesting statements. Let me just read this to you. How many of you have heard of Ruth before? Amen. I'm just going to lay it out real quick here for you. This one verse. It came to pass, this is Ruth 1.1. 1, 1. It came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine. In the, now that's over in the book of Judges. If I had time, I'd take you over to the book of Judges, chapter 1, and show you where Judah had become the leader of Israel. Some of you all know the Bible after this. I better be careful. You'll be able to learn how to read the Scripture. <laughs> Judah, first there was Moses. Everybody say Moses. Moses. And for 40 years he led them around a mountain, out in the desert. 40 years. Around the mountain. Around the mountain. Just enough. Around the mountain. Sinai. Here we are. Going in that desert. 40 years. Moses died. The Bible says, of course, uh, that uh, Joshua came on the scene. Forty years. He took them around a city called Jericho, and the walls fell. Forty years, and then he died. Now what's going to happen? Then the judges begin to come in. The Bible says that Jacob then had prophesied that his son Judah would be like a young lion who could fight like an older lion. And God raised up Judah. And Judah then became the leader of Israel. And that began to happen. Now Judah means 
Praise. Judah in Hebrew means? Praise. Judah means? Praise. Listen, I'd like to tell you there is a sword of the Spirit and the Word of God, the Bible says. The sword of the Spirit and the Word of God. Very important. The sword of the Spirit is what's coming out of your mouth. The Word of God sharp like a two-edged sword. Amen. And the spiritual application swinging that sword is when you're declaring the Word yes. in faith, in praise, in joy, in, in expectation, in hope, in love. When you're declaring the Word, you're releasing the sword of the Spirit or the spiritual force of God's Word. Paul said it's like a two-edged sword. Works for you. Glory to God. It came to pass in the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. This is Ruth 1.1. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab. He and his wife and his two sons. Y'all know the story. I've preached on it more than one time. But I want you to make sure you understand it. This man leaves Bethlehem, Judah. Can I, can I just knock these words off for you real quickly? Bethlehem means a place of seed. A place of fruit. A place of seed. It's a very interesting thing. It, it's a type of the Word. The Word was made flesh. Very important to hear that. Jesus himself was born. The Word was made for Bethlehem. Word, fruit, seed bearing. The word Judah means praise. 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 The word famine means lack. It means without. It means most of the time, a temporary crisis. It means a lack of something in your environment. You can have an emotional famine. You can have a physical famine, financial famine. It can, you can apply it many ways. The word Moab is an interesting word, but anyway, it extrapolates out to the word for a place of comfort especially in that application. So here this man leaves with his wife and his two sons the place of the Word and the seed of God, the place where praise is joined together, Bethlehem, Judah, the Word and Spirit, praise and seed, praise and the Word, and he leaves it because of a temporary crisis that he is in, and he goes over seeking for comfort in a place called Moab where he was commanded to not go. Amen. Too many times Christians, I'm not talking about you, I'm just talking. Too many times Christians in my short, nearly 40 years now of being a senior pastor in a church, I have seen people that when they get in those times of temporary crisis that is going to change, they will leave a place of worship and the Word and they will go out and seek some relief and go to the Moab of comfort which only opens up a door for destruction. I've seen it and it happens every time. Anytime you're going through your temporary crisis, it's not time to close the door and just seek natural comfort and relief. It is time to activate the praise and the Word of God and to release what's on the inside of you and get it flowing. It's not time to back off. Pastor, I thought God was going to supply my need. I got fired from my job. I don't believe that faith stuff. I'm out of here. Oh, my Lord. Instead, you've got to activate. Activate what's already in you that God put in there before you ever need it. My God will supply all of my need. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. 
I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. Come on. I'm blessed in my basket. I'm blessed in the store. God will open windows of heaven and pour out blessings. There won't even be room enough. I may wind up owning my own business. If, they, if I lost that job, God's got something better. Too many times we're willing to give up what's good, seeking for carnal comfort, and miss what God has that's best for our life. You can be sure that's what happened to Naomi and her family. But the mercy of God got in that. And God raised up a Boaz. He was the redeemer. His name is Jesus. He has an ability and a plan to help you and to recover you from every mistake you've ever made. There's a Boaz on the scene. Are you listening to me? He's always been there. He always has and he always will. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I said he is the same. You've just got to offer the sacrifice of praise. If I had time, I'd show you how Ruth and Naomi, they continued to be steadfast when they returned back to Bethlehem, Judah. They continued to be steadfast even in their emaciated condition. And the reputation got over to Boaz that they serve God, Ruth serves God, and she still, even though she came from a, a Moabite background, she's still serving Jehovah God. And it got Boaz, Boaz's attention. And she's out picking stuff in a field, sweating down, her mascara's running, I'm preaching good. Magnify the Lord, humbling herself, doing whatever it takes to be a believer in Bethlehem, Judah. And the next thing you know, instead of begging in the field, she owned the field. I said she owned it because she sacrificed her time and her energy and her old way of living to serve the Lord in the most difficult of situations. Oh, I don't know who I'm helping in here, but somebody came to church to get this today. This thing blowing all up in me right now. There is a sacrifice of praise that should be offered continually. Genesis 49, the Bible says, that Judah comes on the scene. Woo! The scripture says that God will never remove the scepter out of his hand, nor the lawgiver from his feet, until Shiloh comes. Shiloh was the king who would bring deliverance. He was the prophesied one who would bring the answer, the solution to the problem. Uh, when, when, when Jacob begins to prophesy over Judah, he says, Judah will be like a young lion's whelp, but he'll fight like a powerful older lion. And Judah led the children of Israel when Joshua died, and they took out about 30-something other kings, including the sons of Anak. It's important to hear this. The one whose name means praise and who magnified the Lord. He picked up where Joshua had left off. Joshua picked up where uh, Moses had left off. And Judah brought him into the possession. Can I just say, when this service is over today, you can just pick up where I leave off preaching this morning and you can go out there and begin to magnify the Lord and just move right on in to the promised possessions of God. I can't do it for you, but you can do it. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Judah first. And the battle will be won. Send Judah first. And the battle will be won. Send Judah 
first. Well, pastor, I've tried everything else. I guess I ought to try God. No, that's what the sinners say. That's what the unbeliever said. No, you're born again filled with the Holy Ghost. You don't try everything else. You live by the Word and the Spirit of God. And you release that continual praise, giving thanks to His name, a sacrifice. You don't know how bad it is, preacher. I don't feel like sacrificing. That's what makes it a sacrifice. I'm not talking about a sacrifice of dollars. I'm talking about a sacrifice of praise. Too many times we miss it. Listen, I can say this, and, and I'll just have to pick it up in another message, but here it is. Listen to this. If we get so enamored with worship and we do not understand the power of praise, praise is what blows open the gates and the windows and the doors of heaven. We're like, I don't like all that praise. That's just all that charismatic stuff. How are you going to worship unless you know how to praise? I said, how are you going to worship unless you know how to praise? I don't even know if you can worship unless you also know how to praise. Because if it's the abundance of your heart, they begin to sing praises at midnight when Paul and Silas were in prison. And in the midnight hour in the inner uh, lower prison in stocks and bonds and they didn't have hands to worship. They didn't have feet they could worship. They're all blocked up. All they had was a mouth. So they used what they had to praise and to magnify the Lord. Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus couldn't run all around. He was blind. He didn't have, so what did he do? He began to shout with a loud voice, Son of David! You got to use what you've got if you don't have everything you want. Use what you've got. You'll release anointings and they'll begin to flow out here. You see it in there. You hear it, you receive it when it's spoken to you, you believe it. It's not like you're an unbeliever. How do we get it out of here and in manifestation out there? Hold fast the confession of your faith without wavering, continually without wavering. I just don't know why all this bad stuff is happening to me. My God, you're on the way to heaven. There's a whole lot of good stuff happening. Why is it we have a tendency to focus on the bad and that may come in this cursed environment instead of taking time to release the divine into the environment that we live in? It's too easy to sit back and just give up mentally. Start thinking about all the bad stuff. I promise you, I promise you, you woke up this morning with breath and you had the ability to praise God. That trumps everything. You ought to be magnifying God regardless of anything that showed up because while we are living, I will bless the Lord at all times, the Bible says. That's how Christians live. To learn more, visit WalterHallam.net.